Hello again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video I'm going to be talking about a few ideas for how to approach playing like slower pieces, more laid back, more relaxed pieces. This is inspired, I've, I've got a video on, on my, quite a few videos on my channel where I'm just jamming, you know, just playing just really just for the heck of it. And somebody left a comment the other day saying, oh that's really good, have you got any lessons or any tutorials on how to play this sort of stuff? And I don't know if they meant have I got any lessons on how to play music and play guitar generally? In which case, yes, there's loads and loads of tutorials on the channel. Or if they meant something specifically about the more relaxed, laid back type of stuff. And I thought, actually, I haven't got anything that specifically touches on that. So this is the video where I talk about that sort of thing. So the th first thing uh, I need to, to talk about is like the purpose of you playing as part of a piece. So the context here is going to be so I think about playing a solo or for a backing track, but really this applies to, to anything that you play as part of a band context, a backing track context, solo or anything. The most important thing is your role in, in playing is to move the listener in a positive way. It's to add value to the overall piece of music and to enhance the listener's enjoyment you know, maybe you challenge them if that's the, the intention of the piece, to relax them if that's the intention of the piece, to excite them if that's the intention of the piece. But your playing has to be in that context and you need to respect the overall, uh, the overall thing and doing it for the benefit of the listener. What it's absolutely not, and I can't state this strongly enough, what it's not, is a vehicle for you to show how well you can play guitar. This is something I see so many people making the mistake of, is like, oh, I've got an opportunity to play guitar. I will demonstrate how fast I can play, how many techniques I know. I'm gonna show that I know tapping. I'm gonna show that I know how to use the whammy bar. I'm gonna show that I know string bending and being able to play a thousand notes a minute, all this sort of stuff. That's not the point. The, the point of the piece is for the listener's benefit, not yours. So this particularly in the context of something that's something that obviously something that's a bit slower, a bit more laid back, you're not gonna be wanna do all the widdly widdly shred stuff. But just as a general rule, your role um your role is to play it as part of the overall piece of music. Your role is not to show off what you can do. That's the number one rule and it leads us quite nicely, I think, to the second point about playing in a, a slower, more laid back context, and that's just speed. And this is a bit of an obvious one, probably, but we need to mention it because it's so important. And that is your playing speed will generally be slower. It's more laid back. You want to play it within the context of the piece. This isn't about a high beats per minute, exciting, uplifting piece of music. It's about laid back, chill, late night sort of vibe. You're not going to be shredding from one one note to the other as fast as you possibly can. It's going to be slower phrases, um, more laid back, more sustained notes, and it gives you the opportunity to think about how those notes that you, you play fit in with the, the underlying chords and what we'll talk about in note choice um, in a second. But yeah, you might play little little phrases where you, you string a few notes together quite quickly, but generally it's going to be about slower, more laid back, uh, feeling with slower playing because it's a slower piece. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. For the purposes of this video, I've recorded just a quick guitar part into the looper. So I'll play that back now, play something over the top of it, and you'll see what I mean. You see what I mean? There's a, quite a lot of sustained notes there, you know, moving through through licks and resting on a note and just letting it letting it ring out and listening to how that 
interacts with the underlying chord. There was a few places where I could play maybe something a little bit faster. Or, or something like. But it wasn't a fast lick, it was just a few almost like passing notes to get me from one slower sustained note to a, another. It wasn't about playing fast, it was like I say more passing notes rather than a fast phrase. So that's the sort of thing you need to be going for. The underlying chord progressions you could hear is just a you know, fairly low, a slow tempo sort of thing. So to fit in with that you're playing a fairly laid back sympathetic lead line over the top of it. And with those longer sustained notes as well, think about using vibrato. Now if you're just resting on a note for a long time, it's, it's a little bit hard on the ear just, just hearing that note just ringing out. But if you put a little bit of vibrato on there, you know, it just softens the, the listening experience up a little bit. And in a slow, laid back piece like this, where we're gonna be playing longer sustained notes, a little bit of vibrato is really useful. Before we talk about note choice, um, just quickly mention sound. Uh, the underlying chord there, well, I just played with the clean guitar, uh, a little bit of reverb and touch of chorus, that was it. And over the top of it, to fit the mood of the song, I'm not playing with tons and tons of overdrive. I could crank up the gain on the amp, I could put a distortion pedal or something in there. It just wouldn't fit the mood. I want something to make my lead guitar sound different to the underlying guitar. So what I've done is I've turned the chorus off and turned a bit of delay on to give me a slightly different, slightly different voice. And I've added in, I've added in a, a clone clone. I've got a Frederick Effects Golden Eagle down on the board. The gain is only about one o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. These are vintage output pickups, so they're, they're, they're fairly, fairly low, low output. So they're not giving me loads and loads of gain. <laughs> There's, there's, but there's a little bit of break up there. So that gives the guitar a different voice. And so it sounds interesting. But we're not playing loads and loads of gain because that just, again, that doesn't suit the mood of the piece. I could play something a bit more aggressive, like a, like an Angry Charlie, which is a much higher gain sound. And we stack that in with a Bad Monkey Overdrive. Now hear how that sounds. Yeah, it's the note choice in that's okay, but the voice just doesn't really fit in with the feel. And if you imagine in the, a laid back sort of band context, you might have some like nice subtle keys going on in the background. You know, the drums aren't going to be hammering away. So high gain guitar probably does, just isn't appropriate in that sort of context. Next thing to talk about is note choice. So the progression that we're playing here is 12 bar blues basically in A natural minor. So minor blues, the obvious choice of scale for that would be an A minor pentatonic, which is very, very common scale. So I can play a lead line just taking notes from that scale. And that fits in with the piece. It's not giving you any awful tension. The notes fit in quite nicely against the underlying chords. And so we're playing slow in this case. So there's going to be quite a few sustained notes. So if you think about the notes involved in a minor pentatonic, you've got a one, flat three, four, five, and a flat seven. So with the exception of that fourth, so a D in the case of an A minor pentatonic, you've got one, flat three, five, flat seven. So those are all notes of the A minor seven chord. So the strong chord tone, so I can sustain any of those 
over the over an A minor pentatonic, sorry, over an A minor chord, most of those notes from the A minor pentatonic will sit quite nicely and they feel resolved and, and settled and you're not introducing tons of tension, which is going to make the listener feel awkward because you don't want to do that. This is meant to be a slow, laid back, mellow sort of piece. So if I just start the, the chords off, play a one, or a flat three, or a five. You know, those, those, those notes sit quite nicely against the underlying chord because they're chord tones. Now you get a different type of tension if you're playing the root note of the chord versus if you're playing the fifth note of the chord, but those different like feels that you get are all fairly consonant, they're fairly relaxed, they don't challenge the, the listener too much. So if we're thinking about a, a blues piece, you think, oh, if I'm playing A minor pentatonic, anywhere I can play an A minor pentatonic, I could get away with playing an A minor blues scale. And just adding in that flat fifth. And you can do that, but that flat fifth, for all it's kind of correct, um, in a blues context, really majoring uh, on the, the, fl the, the flat fifth note is going to sound a bit dissonant and it's going to challenge the, the listener a little bit too much. You know, you don't want that. That's Technically, that note's right, but it's it's not one that you want to to really stress on. Perfectly okay though to use it as a as a passing note. Yeah, so it can pass through it, and that little bit of dissonance wants to wants to move on, and we do. We give, we give the the listener some some resolution by moving on quite quickly. The, you know, there's a great um, thing to bear in mind when you're playing solos about tension and release. Um, you know, building in some tension, wanting the, the the note to move on somewhere else, and then like the reward of moving of moving on to somewhere somewhere more settled. And depending on the mood of the piece, you might be able to get away with staying on that that outside, that dissonant, that tense note for longer. But in the context of something slow and laid back, not so much. There's a nice richness to be had from using it as a passing note. So, you know, that this is a lick that I really like, where you're going for, where you've got the one and you just hammer on the flat fifth above the four and then move down. Flat three, one, flat seven, one. And that, that, that flat five, just as a passing note, adds a bit of flavour, but it's not really intruding. Another scale option that I've got, because we're playing in a natural minor key, we're playing in the key of A minor, I could play the A natural minor scale. I could take notes in the A natural minor and incorporate those into my lead line. Now there's a lot of overlap between a minor pentatonic scale and a natural minor. The one, the flat three, the four, the five and the flat seven occur in the natural minor and in the minor pentatonic. But in the natural minor, we've also got second degree and a, sixth, a flat sixth degree. And they, these are interesting notes to add because they bring out the minor feel. So they get away from like that more laid back, um, very quite consonant, blues feeling that we get from the minor pentatonic and we introduce more um, more interesting harmonies. If so if we, if we play seconds and flat sixes as part of the lead line, it brings out more harmonic richness, but we need to think about how consonant or how dissonant those notes sound against the underlying chords. <laughs> So again, that's a perfectly valid note, but sustaining on it, maybe not so good. The second has a tension, we can rest on that for a while, and 
I think it's a little bit more pleasing to the ear than the flat six. But again, they serve a purpose if we want to use them as passing notes. <laughs> So using the flat six there, but I'm just passing through it. So I'm getting the, the richness of the harmony, but I'm not resting on a note that sounds too tense. So think about your note choices and how tense they sound. We're talking about here, the context is slow, laid back, mellow, not challenging, not harsh on the ear sort of piece. So your note choice needs to support that. There's definitely a place where you're going to be using those sorts of notes against the same chords, but it'll be in a different context. If I was playing like some something like in a metal context, I could I generally would lean in to using the flat sixth degree over the one chord because it gives you more of a, more tension. And I'd be playing with a completely different sound and going for a completely different vibe. But here we're talking about something that's a bit more mellow, slow, laid back. And I think that brings us nicely to the last point, which is about listening to what you're playing and evaluating it as you go. You particularly would think about like improvising uh, here. It's not about just knowing, well, I've got these, these licks that I can play and I can just regurgitate them. I know this lick, it's a minor blues lick. I'm playing in the key of A minor, so I'll, I'll base it around an A minor blues or an A minor pentatonic and just playing it. You know, it won't be wrong, you know, no choice will be correct because it fits into the key, but is it going to be correct for the piece? So listen to it. Is your phrasing sympathetic to the piece? Is the the speed of it, you know, is it actually too fast? Is it too shreddy? Do you need to cut down the number of notes? And so being able to listen while you're playing and evaluate what you're hearing against the underlying piece, underlying chords, and adapting it and just fitting in on the fly and if you're playing in a band context being able to trade off other musicians and what they're doing you know if you're trading solos with somebody listening to what they're doing evaluating it and then being able to play in a way that's sympathetic when time comes for you to play to play your solo and this is why it's useful to understand theory the idea the idea of having rules to play by is one thing and I try to stay away from thinking of music theory as rules. Yes, they are rules, but really approach them more as guidelines uh, because there's ways you can you can break them, you can adapt them, but you need to understand those rules, those guidelines uh, first. But understanding them helps you to understand what it is that you're playing. So you might have a lick that you've been playing for years, but you don't necessarily understand how those notes relate. You, know, you might say, oh yeah, this, I've got a lick here that really works. But when you've studied a bit of theory, you understand, okay, well the notes I'm playing, oh, these all come from like the minor pentatonic. And the reason that works really well is, oh, it finishes on, on a, what's actually the first degree of the scale, so it's finishing on a strong, a strong chord tone. So having that music theory helps you to understand what it is that you're playing. And when you, you present it with a challenge, like here's a piece which requires you to play something that sounds quite mellow, you understand, well, what are the inside notes? What are the outside notes? I want something that sounds relaxed and mellow. I'll probably focus more on the inside notes. Or if you present it with something which is a bit dark and a bit doomy, you think, okay, for that, I probably want to focus more on the outside notes. So understanding the theory helps. Okay. I hope you found that useful. I feel there's been quite a lot of talking in there, but I guess it's, it's a necessary evil because I want to explain the concept and give you some ideas uh, rather than just playing stuff and expecting you to figure out what it was that it was doing. Um, it's often a common criticism on this channel that I talk too much, but no, it's meant to be an education channel and to do that. I, I do need to talk. Uh, so hopefully there was some stuff there that you found was interesting and useful and you can take that away and apply it in your own playing. You know, whether it's in slow laid back type of stuff or you can take those principles maybe and flip them on the head for something that's like I say, more challenging where you want something that's got more tension or more speed or, or whatever. Yeah, hopefully there's something there to inspire you. If you found the video useful, then please click the like button down there. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see other stuff that I post on the channel, then please click the subscribe button, which is also down there, and click the bell icon. That way you get notified of any new videos that I post onto the channel. 
You're welcome to leave a comment. YouTube's a bit rubbish at notifying me when people do leave comments on videos though. So if there's something specific you want to ask me when it's about guitar playing, music theory, guitar gear, anything at all, you're better off going here. There's a form there that you can fill in. A uh, question comes direct to me and I can get around to answering it in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.